Hi everyone, Vibrant Venture is no longer an alpha. As of the release of this video, the game has entered the beta phase. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's getting close to completion, and what remains are mostly the ending of the game, more level builder content, bug fixes, various miscellaneous features and tweaks, and also polishing existing features. It's been about two years since we released the game on Steam in early access, and a lot has changed since. So thank you for staying with us and for continuing to support us. When the game first launched, it only featured six levels and the first world map. But now there's more than three times as many levels, plus a ton of extra features like the shop, the pet maker, and the level builder. That's right, this update features the first version of the level builder, something I know you guys have wanted for a long time now. This, combined with all the other features in this update, means that this is hands down the largest update thus far. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves and let's take a look at all the new features in this update, starting of course with the highly anticipated level builder. I won't be spending too much time talking about the level builder, since I already made a playlist of videos covering all the major features and milestones, which you can watch by clicking the card in the top right. But I have added quite a number of features since the last devlog, so let's talk about those. First of all, you can now drag placed objects around, instead of having to delete them and reconfigure them every time you want to move them. This should help make the level building process much nicer and more streamlined. Next, there's now music in the level builder, so it's no longer completely quiet. Currently, the music from the pet maker will also play in the level builder, and when you play a level, it will play the music corresponding to the level theme that you've selected. This may change in the future, and new music might be added, but I think this works for the first version of the level builder. The line tool can also be used to draw slopes now, so you no longer have to place slopes one at a time with the pencil tool. I've also added moving platforms, which also make use of the waypoint system I introduced in the last devlog. These have quite a number of properties that should make them rather flexible to work with. In addition, the character barriers have been added now, so you can lock the player to a specific character at any point in your level. I'm guessing players will also use this to make levels where you can only play as a single character throughout the whole level. Either way, I'm looking forward to seeing the creative ways it'll be used. And finally, you can now enter the level builder in two different ways, either through the pause menu or through the title screen after selecting a save file. These new buttons here even have unique animated art as you can see. There are a few more features in the level builder that I don't feel are worth going into too much detail about, like this little disclaimer here showing up when you first open the level builder. And also keep in mind that this is the first public release of the level builder, so some things are likely to change and new features will hopefully be added later on, at least that's the plan. So keep in mind that if your favorite enemy or gimmick isn't usable in the level builder yet, it may be added in the future. Moving on to the second major feature of the Beta 1 update is, of course, Juniper. This character was created for a contest in our Discord server by Sarah Zero, and you can find her hidden in all the main levels of the game. Once you do, she'll have some unique dialogue about the level and reward you with a sneak peek of the painting she's working on. If you manage to find her in all the levels she's in, there's even a special completion bonus that'll unlock. Of course, I'm not going to spoil this surprise, so you'll have to go out there and find her yourself in all of the levels. The third major feature of this update is Steam Achievements. Beta 1 features 15 unlockable achievements, all with unique artwork of the game. Some of these achievements require a lot of thought to figure out how to unlock, and are quite well hidden, but they should give you a good laugh. We had a lot of fun creating one particular secret achievement, and we even made a new area just for this one achievement. Now, let's move on to the miscellaneous features. There's a ton of these, so let's go over the most important ones. Levels now feature these new special walls that reveal secrets once you enter them. You can almost always see them by looking for small discrepancies or strange patterns in the tiles 
that normally wouldn't make much sense. Some of them are used to hide areas that were already in the game, while others are used to hide brand new secret areas. These secret walls add an extra layer of depth to level exploration, because now you really need to pay attention to your surroundings or you'll miss an important secret. Another new feature I've added is controller vibration. If you play the game with controller, it will now vibrate when you take damage or die. This is another highly requested feature that I think really helps immerse you in the game. But should you find this annoying, I made sure to add an option to turn it off. Moving on to some of the new level specific features, in 1-4 when you get to the ball roller, while Astro now stands just right of the trap waiting for you to fall into it. And when you do, he laughs at you. And just to rub it in, he shows up again after you've been trapped in the ball, laughs at you again and leaves. Such a charming gentleman, isn't he? In 2-4, there is now a unique intro animation that ties it together with 2 dash bonus, as you can see here. This is another one of those features that I think really helps make the world feel much more connected. In 3-2, when you enter the train, it now plays a little cutscene where the train starts and begins driving. Before, you would enter the train and it would somehow already be magically driving. This makes a lot more sense now, and it also gives the level some extra flavour. At the start of the Sparklestone Shores world map, a new inaccessible area to the top left now shows the lighthouse, which is also visible in the title screen. This was added to connect the world map to the title screen, but also because the old world map felt a bit empty around this area, as you can see here. There is also a new default control scheme in the game, which is quite different from the old default control scheme. On an Xbox controller, it uses the bumpers and the back buttons for actions like jumping, and ABXY for swapping. This not only matches the colours of the characters, but it also allows you to swap and jump at the same time. Doing this on the old control scheme was quite difficult, as you had to use your right thumb for both actions by alternating between the right stick and the action buttons. I do realise that not everyone will like this new control scheme, so to prevent frustration and confusion, you can actually still reset your controls to the old control scheme by going into the options menu and entering the control mapper. Here, you can click this button to select either the new default control scheme or the classic control scheme. A new lighting engine has also been implemented, which allows us to do cool lighting effects we weren't able to do before. As an example, check out these vines in 2-3. The crystals now glow in the dark. There are several other instances where the new lighting engine is used for subtle details, but I'm not going to go through all of them. In general, this new lighting engine is both much more performant and more flexible, giving us more tools to work with. The pause menu has also been updated and now features a new layout and a slick animated border. This is quite similar to how it used to look back in the old days before the game was publicly available, as you can see here in this ancient video. I think it looks a lot cleaner now, and the old one definitely looks a little tame and boring by comparison. Anyway, that's all the most important features in this update. As always, you can find the full changelog with more details and notes in the description down below. Please be aware that this update is highly ambitious for us, with the level builder of course being the biggest new feature. As such, there are probably going to be some bugs and issues when it first comes out, but I will do my very best to fix these as fast as possible, and continue putting out patches until all the bugs have been fixed. Should you run into any problems yourself, you can file a bug report via the bug reports channel in our Discord server. Link to the server can also be found in the description. Alright, I think that about does it for me for this time. This update has been a long time in the making, and it's something we're very pleased to finally be able to share with you all. We hope it lives up to your expectations, and that you'll have fun with the level builder. If making levels yourself isn't your cup of tea, you can always check out the Steam Workshop and see what levels other people have made and maybe even give them a try yourself. We're already working on the next update and we've made a good amount of progress on it already. 
I can't say when it'll be ready though, but as always, we'll keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.